Good morning, everyone. This is Jason. I hope this video finds you doing well. It is Monday, March the 4th, 2019. Uh, we're going to do a, <laughs> I guess, market review slash market preview for the week since I've been missing in action for the week. Um, one difficult thing about living in two different countries is everything is good when you're in one country and you have a system or, or routine going. But as soon as you move or switch between the two, uh, causes a little bit of problems for making videos, but I'm back and um, we're we're kind of sitting in the same spot we were. Just it's progressed a little bit, um, but we'll we'll go through the charts a little bit, see what we think is going to happen, um, and just take a peek at it. We are going to go live this week. Uh, whenever I'm in the United States, I have commitments on Thursday, so I probably will do the live videos on Wednesday. And when I'm not in the U.S., they'll probably be on Thursday. So. Um, I'm in the U.S. right now, so I think we're going to go live on Wednesday. Follow me on Twitter, at CryptoBitJunkie. I will announce on Twitter what day and time we go live, and then we can review any chart that you want to look at when you on a live session. All right, so let's look at the SPY and the overall broad market here. Um, so the interesting thing about right now is since it's a new month, I get to go in and do my monthly review of my monthly charts so I do them you know a monthly chart is based each bar is one month so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to look at it in the middle of the month that's what the weekly charts and the daily charts are for so I evaluate the monthly charts and update polarity and you know market direction and that kind of thing and support and resistance areas on the monthly chart at the end of the month or the beginning of the, of the next month and I had a chance to do that for March and predictably a lot of the charts are pointing up I mean, this we were in, we're in a I think it's nine or ten straight weeks of going straight up on the market, and a lot of the individual charts reflect that as well. So polarity has been up on a weekly level, and now on a monthly level, a lot of the charts have changed to up. However, that's not the case with SPY. Okay, so the red lines represent monthly res support or resistance. In this case, it's resistance. Blue lines represent weekly support or resistance. In this case, it's support. So the polarity on a weekly level is still up for the S&P. However, the monthly chart still reflects that we're in a down move. So let's back out to the weekly chart because the monthly chart is it's only two or three bars. So it's kind of hard to read. But we'll start there. All right. So here's the monthly chart. And if you zoom in on this, what you have here is the market was going up. You had a change in polarity with this down move that was 20.2% of a drop here. Broke polarity, changed the market bias to down. We've come back up for two straight months and we're in the resistance area here, but the move from here, from the 20% drop is larger than the resistance and the retracement that we've done. Now we've come about 80% of the way back, which would be about, I don't know, 15 or 16% uh, I could measure it. Um, so it's it's twenty percent of this move. Yeah, there's a different kind of math equation you have to do to get that number right, but basically, uh, it's dropped twenty point two percent and it's retraced eighty percent of that, which would be a a net number of around sixteen percent, give or take that has come back up, but it's come 20% back from this bottom. So it's, it's a different math equation. So that tool is not really useful for doing that, but we've, we've come back 80% of the way, but that's still in a resistance area, especially when we haven't had a pullback. So if we look at this on a weekly chart, um, this area here. So when the price first dropped down and made a low, uh, here, it came up and tested this high right here. This was 281.15. Okay. Price fell there and then dropped lower. Came back up and tested it, 281.22, failed again. Came back up and tested it, 280.40, failed again, fell again, failed again, and then dropped even lower. So this entire drop from, uh, looks like September to December 24th, uh, basically was 20%. Now we've retraced and we've come back. Uh, this is a weekly chart, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've come back nine weeks where we've closed with a higher high. Now, this is the resistance area that I've identified. We're still in it, which means I wouldn't buy up here, which means I've, I've missed a lot of profits. February wasn't a very good month. You know, uh, 
because we're in a resistance area and I'm not going to buy there, there were a lot of buying opportunities, a lot of triggers to buy, and I didn't take them because I'm in a resistance area. So I'd rather sit on the sidelines, and, and the month was pretty flat. Um, I had a few trades. I had some winners and I had some losers, and it's just, you know, you get a lot of false signals on sales. There was no there was no conviction on the part of the sellers. So a lot of the sell positions I entered didn't have follow through. Some of them stopped out break even. Some of them stopped out overall. Then I had a few winners, which are, you know, almost two times as big as the losers. So in the, in the end, it, it was a pretty flat month. Um, and that, it gets, you know, that happens sometimes when you're in an area like this and the market does something kind of contrary. Historically, um, when you get this kind of a pullback and after this kind of a drop, Normally, this support area is going to hold up when price comes back down. But the thing that's that I'm fearful of here is we still haven't had a retest. And, you know, you feel a lot better about going long when there's a retest. You know, I'm, I'm considering rethinking my position on the longer term. This being the spot where the longer term recession area happens. I know we have a lot of political issues and I know we have the length of the market. But historically, when price recovers this well, it doesn't fail it typically doesn't come back down here and go make new lows. Typically, this support is going to hold with a move this strong back against the original move historically. And it's it's very favorable that the market could continue going up. So I may change my stance. You know, like I told you, it's it's, it's a fluid thing. The market uh, is going to dictate what I what my opinion is. So this movement is very, very bullish that we've had. I'll show you something that happened on the daily chart. A couple of days ago when I didn't get a chance to make a video we had a uh, we had a break here let me see if I can zoom in on this we had a break here where the price kind of broke in the middle of this range but then on the very next day let me get the magnet off on the very next day it broke to the upside and I know this is okay so price was going up here and it closed on the other side of this line which typically can signify a change in polarity but the very next day it broke polarity going the other way so it's kind of like a, a I call that a double cross this is a very bullish signal you know so I typically would have looked to trade that going up if we weren't in a resistance area I would have been looking to buy it here and you can see that would have been a, a pretty favorable trade it's come back up and touched that high so that would have been a, win, a winning trade but because we're in a resistance area I don't take that trade and that's the second time this has happened uh, on its way up in this, these resistance areas here so it's been a very bullish market and but we're still in a in a resistance area is per the charts the polarity on a monthly level has not changed to up. It's still down. And this longer big term move down overrides this this short term move up. Now, it could invalidate it this week if price comes up and makes a new high. Obviously, that's going to bode well for the bullish case. But I definitely would, would look to buy if we get a retest back down here. Uh, it's just a low probability trade up here. But it's it's proven me wrong every week. We've been talking about this for four weeks now, I think. And it's been in the resistance area and it's continuously going up. So um, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do. Um, this red candle here in the resistance area, this kind of hangman, is typically a bearish um, indication. But we've had multiple trend line breaks on the daily chart um, to the downside in resistance areas and all of them have failed repeatedly. So um, this looks like it could be a turning point, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll let the market tell us. So in individual, I trade individual stocks. I have, like I said, I've only traded the S&P one time since, I don't know, December or, or November of last year. And it was a short position uh, somewhere, I think, in here. And I won the trade, but I haven't got any other signals um, for sales since then. And the buy signals uh, haven't haven't panned out either so <clears throat> because it's in a resistance area so uh, we're just going to kind of watch the market and see what happens uh, it's been pretty uneventful individual stocks are trading but i you know it's really good to do the monthly and weekly reviews because when i do them it really gives me a chance to zoom out on the charts and it, it gives you perspective 
you know, this this run up just seems like it's only going to run up. But when you when you pull out to a weekly chart and you look at some of the individual stocks, like this is Johnson and Johnson, there was a huge move down. This is a retracement, and typically markets turn. You know, like you can't get too caught in the moment. Home Depot price went way down. It turned. Here's the mo week, the monthly resistance, and you know, look at that engulfing pattern right there. It's probably going down. Like when you zoom out to the weekly and the monthly charts, what looks like, oh my God, the market's only going straight up. It puts the perspective back that, you know, these are just retracements in a bigger move. So my thought is still in, is still intact. Um, but I, I will say that the size in the, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? The trajectory of the upward move has kind of changed what I think is going to happen longer term. Now, I think long term, the recession's coming regardless because we've been 10 years in a bull run and it's just markets don't work that way. It's cyclical. It's going to go down, but it may not be this move that started here that started it. Or we could get, you know, one of these deals here and then, you know, a top here, this kind of thing. And then and then some consolidation. And then a move down. But what that equals is more time. If if nothing else, I think the the time that the market's gonna to make a new drop and the, the recession starts and we have a you know a prolonged bear market has been pro has uh the time and when that's gonna happen has been pushed back because of this move up. Because typically a retracement this far and this deep doesn't retrace and penetrate and make new lows. It just it doesn't. There's just it puts in too many buyers to put in support here that it's just it's just unlikely unless there's some type of macroeconomic or new cycle event that changes everything like the trade wars with China break down or something fundamentally happens. That's really different. Unless that happens, I see this market is going to give us a nice, strong push to the upside, I think. Um, once it does break down, but we're still waiting for the breakdown and I'm just not buying here. It's just a low probability trade until we get the breakdown. Okay. So, um, but you know, we're not trying to predict the market. We're just trying to play what we see. And right now we're still in a resistance area. So I, I'm, I'm not a buyer here. The month has been slow. We'll see if it does better in March and it looks like it could turn today, but it's looked like it's turned five times before and it hasn't moved. So, uh, we'll see what happens, but that's my thoughts. I'm back around. Um, we will do a market update video in the next day or two, and then uh, we'll go live a little later this week. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.